Hi, I'm Chelsea. Hi, I'm Sarah. Let's talk death over drinks. This is the drink that I made. So, so it, is, it, looks like a, it looks like a Coke in a mason jar. Kind of, but it's supposed to be purple. Like you can't really see it. Like I can see it. Between but it's the like a dark spirits, purple. Yeah. It's like a purple, but it has Sprite in it. So there's kind of Coke in it, but it's really good. What are you drinking? Are you drinking your grapefruit? So it's I'll, like a Cosmo. I'll, it does look like a Cosmo. You know why? Because it has cranberry juice in it. No, um, so I was just going to do wine tonight because I was like, it's lower calories, but then like I had a shit day. My whole week was long. Like I worked long hours this week. And so I was just like, nope, nope, I'm doing a martini and I haven't done, it's the cranberry limoncello martini that I made you Ooh, a couple times. You like it. Yep. I haven't so had it for a really long time because it's just the calories, you know? And so tonight, I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so I had like just after the day you burger, had, <laughs> like just the meat with like a tomato and some lettuce and this. <laughs> so there you like, go. I could fit that in. Balance. <laughs> I, know, that's for sure. <laughs> I do. I know. I do that all the time. I'm all well. I honestly do chips. too. I can't have a glass of wine. <laughs> Glass of wine it is. Love drinking our calories. <laughs> I do, As I Jana do would actually. Say. Yeah, Jana. <laughs> know, that's what she always says. I'd rather drink my calories. <laughs> I do. Even in coffee. I, get, I like drinking my coffee, my calories in coffee too. Mm -hmm. I just like yeah. coffee. Though even Especially now, with... I'm cutting down on no more lattes, too many calories. And I like, told myself I was gonna get a pumpkin spice latte today, and I still have not done that. So your makeup looks tomorrow. really good today. Thank you. This is my all day at work makeup. Way different from like uh, our last video. Last video I did like highlighting. I did uh, like eyeliner, some lipstick. Like this is just chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> I just have chapstick on too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll screw that shit. <laughs> all right. So let's jump into it. So we're yeah, talking, we talking about, about. I'm like super curious. So this you've like left ah, me a bit. I know it's all week suspense. long. I've been like I feel really weird not having like something in front of me. I feel really weird not even knowing like what the topic is or who and what and when. So <laughs> it's like giving me a little anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't like this feeling. <laughs> it's, it's that sense of, you know, not having control. I totally yes. get that. <laughs> I'm, all, uh, I'm not used to this. <laughs> well, it's right, a very yeah. interesting about? story. It's a, sh it's a shorter story than our last one because there wasn't really wasn't a long. lot of, you know, gory details. There wasn't obviously a, a court um, or anything like that, but there is a lot of history as well as some paranormal aspects of it too. So this kind of goes and into, that's you know, yeah. Like so the paranormal twist. Yeah. And I, I mean, if anybody knows me, I love all things paranormal. So of course this, this always spikes my interest, <laughs> but, um, we will be talking a little bit about domestic violence. Uh, so, you know, if, if ghosts aren't your thing, if you get triggered by domestic violence, we will be talking about those things. So uh, this video might not be for you, but if anything, just tune in with us next week uh, with our next video. So we're going to be talking about Mark and Deborah Constantino. They are actually known uh, more in the paranormal field. Uh, Deborah is actually an EVP expert. For those of you who do not know what that is, it's an electronic voice phenomena. Uh, you've probably seen it all over the ghost shows where they talk into the recorders and people uh, get recordings of 
these ghosts of whether it's voices, sounds, whatever. Uh, so she was an expert in that and they were paranormal investigators and they did assist on uh, ghost adventures, which ghost adventures is a huge ghost hunting show. I personally love that show. Um, so they did start in show or episodes such as Mustang Ranch Brothel. Yes, they still have a brothel uh, in Nevada, which is where they're from. Uh, Goldfield Hotel, Mark Street Cinema, and also Demon House, which is a, a documentary that Zach Bagans actually conjures up. And he does actually mention them in that documentary as well, which we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so... With Mark and Deborah, I don't know exactly how long they were together. They were together for quite some time. They also have a daughter together. Her name is Raquel. And But it started allegedly with the domestic abuse in 2012. And it started with Mark filing a domestic uh, a temporary restraining order against Deborah. And it was due to cutting him with a knife, allegedly, uh, during an argument while being intoxicated. And a day later... He dropped it. I know. Drink responsibly. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so, uh, but he did drop it a day later, um, which kind of raises a red flag for me on his end because yeah. who's to say if that was really true or not? Because so wait, did she actually like attack him and stab him or cut him with the knife or just she said he she he said she tried to so okay. so there's really no evidence of like an actual cut that, that right you okay exactly so and he dropped it so himself. exactly and he dropped it so it's not like there was any further investigation into it and that was only one for a few years actually but you know, then, who knows too because like at the same time like, you think about women who report, like, domestic violence, they drop it, too. It's, yeah. like, this, this thing that they have, like, you know it's bad, but mm -hmm. they still, I don't know, they drop it for some reason. I don't know. And it's, like, it's a It's a control and fear thing. I, yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. I mean, I went through it with my ex, too. So, it's, yeah. it's there's so many different variables that, that go into it, for sure. Um, but that was their only incident for about three years until uh, July of 2015. He actually filed another temporary restraining order against her. Uh, so apparently she was yelling at him over credit card debt. Apparently he was having a lot of money issues. And so she was upset about it, as probably anybody would be. So they were, she was yelling, but she was yelling pretty loud to the point where the neighbor was actually the one who called the cops on them. So uh, and then again, he quoted that she grabbed a knife and swiped at me. So again, kind of going back to that first domestic dispute, you know, kind of the same um, <clears throat> MO, I guess. So with this temporary restraining order, he again, let, actually, let me back up a little bit. So soon after that, Debbie actually moved out. She was pretty much like, I'm done. I'm going to go live with friends, but she ended up getting two roommates. Um, she was living with them and they were supposed to have court and he failed to appear in court. So then they dropped it. So again, no further investigation for that was, was ever done. Um, so she, after she started living with friends, he started badgering her. I mean, constantly texting her, trying to get a hold of her and with no success. He kept texting her, texting her. She was like, I'm pretty much not going to talk to you. And he got her. And this makes me so mad because I have dogs. I know if anything were to happen to them or if they escaped, you know, I would be the first one, you know, to try to find them or do something about it. So he lured her in uh, by texting her saying that the, her dog had gotten out. And so that, you know, that they, he ran away. So she grabbed a friend and it's not clear if this was a friend that she was living with um, or just like a general friend. Uh, I'm going to say it's just a general friend. But so she showed up with their friend. And as soon as she got there, their daughter, Raquel, who was 23 at the time, ended up pulling, like opening the car door of her friend's side, so the passenger side, and starts beating her, her friend. And then all while Mark 
decides to pull Debbie out of the car and literally drags her in her, in her words, like a rag doll into the house. And this is where both Mark and Raquel beat her and strangle her over and over again to the point of unconsciousness, as well as dragging her from room to room. So and wait, this is their- Raquel's a daughter. Yeah, and their daughter. helping beat the mom? Mm-hmm. Wow. 23 years old and I don't know the story behind that as far as what I'm triggered trying her to, like, picture that and I'm like, wow, that's really fucked up. yeah I mean in cases like this I feel like you see it more with like either stepdaughters or you yeah. know just someone like more related to like that but side she's, like her daughter daughter mm -hmm. yeah. yeah wow so Wow. Yeah, it's it's very disturbing to think that she would accompany him in that kind of act. But is there like a reason why? Was there a reason why given? I couldn't find anything as to, you know, even I couldn't even find like the exact court documents. I found the court that all of these uh, temporary restraining orders and like the, the court hearings itself were in, but I couldn't find the actual court documents. It was very hard, but... Yeah, there wasn't really any given reason as to why she was helping him, but she did. Um, so she, because of this, uh, she ended up filing a restraining order of her own as well as filing for divorce. And in that restraining order, um, at, during in the report, she actually reported that he said, and I quote, I am the devil and I'm going to slit your throat. And also while noticing that his work razor was missing. so. She really, truly believed that based off of what he was doing and what he said, and the fact that that razor was missing, I mean, she was in fear for her life. And so that's why uh, shortly after, so this happened August of 7th of 2015, and she went to file for divorce and the restraining order on August 10th. So this is just three days after the fact. Um, after getting beaten, yes. And uh, so they were supposed to, appear in court in December for the divorce hearing. But unfortunately, they did not make it that far because on September 22nd, um, oh, actually, let me back up a little bit. So he was actually arrested and booked because of this um, based off of first degree kidnapping and first degree domestic battery. But obviously, shortly after that, he was released. <clears throat> so Going back, Debbie had two roommates. One of them was James Anderson, and the other one, I'm assuming they were unnamed. I don't know if it was a male or a female. I, mean, I think it was a female, uh, but they didn't give any names about the other roommate. So on September 22nd, that other roommate ended up finding James, their other roommate, dead in their apartment due to a gunshot wound to the head. She immediately called the police, and as police got there, they also were concerned for Debbie, their other roommate, and she happened to be missing. Somehow they were able to track her and it tracked her phone all the way to Raquel's apartment. And so police went straight over there and it was uh, known to be said that <clears throat> as soon as the police got there, they already heard shots firing. So Raquel was not at the scene um, at all, but it was reported that Mark was staying with her uh, during everything that was going on, but she wasn't there at the moment. So Mark had actually barricaded him and Debbie inside of the apartment as well as, uh, and he heard the police coming because he was telling them to stay away. And I quote, he did say, give me 15 minutes to gather my thoughts or I'll kill her. So that's exactly what they said. And SWAT ended up showing up. Um, they were trying to negotiate with him, but it really wasn't getting anywhere. And it got to a point where, I mean, they were hearing these shots fired, but they never returned fire back. They did end up getting into the apartment with uh, explosives. And Mark had already killed Debbie and also shot himself. So it was considered a murder-suicide. So again, just to summarize, so Mark did end up killing James Anderson, Debbie's roommate, and then killed her and then killed himself all with gunshot wounds. Um, so this is where things kind of get a little interesting because 
you know, they do have a long history of domestic violence and you see people because they were very well known in the paranormal community and people, and it's, what's crazy to me is that their friends, uh, if you talk to some of their friends, they had no idea about the domestic violence up until they heard about the death. And she, um, I think she only told one friend who she was kind of like a, like a spiritual coach for her. She was about 72 years old. Rebecca, Rebecca Evans was her name. And, you know, she did tell her that she was very happy to, you know, leave him, even though it was very hard. And she did tell her, you know, that she was fearful of him and, um, she said the last time that she did speak with her, that she was very, very hopeful for her um, because she was on the verge of getting out of that situation versus other people had no clue. They said, and uh, during their interviews that they, all they saw was love that they had no idea about domestic violence or domestic abuse in any shape or form that they, I mean, that they just, to them, they were just happy. And I feel like that, you know, that can be in a lot of cases with domestic violence too, right? Or you never know exactly what happens behind. Exactly. Yes. So, and in her divorce uh, that she requested was that she really wanted to keep her business, her like paranormal business, as far as, you know, being an EVT, EVP expert um, and a paranormal investigator, because apparently he was not really in it for, the paranormal side of it. It was more just like he was kind of along for the ride. And so that was the one thing that she did ask for in her divorce. And so for her, I mean, cause this was her whole passion. She even grew, she reported that she grew up in a haunted house and that ghosts always tended to follow her. Like this was her passion in life. So, uh, they had a Facebook page and it was mainly on Mark's side and it ended up being taken over by one of his uh, his sisters Sandra Constantino and she kind of kept it as it was and she said that she was pretty much going to continue it in his name and putting his memorial services in there Uh, and then eventually she ended up changing it to her pretty much like her own little paranormal investigation group and Shortly after their passing, uh, so it was her, his other sister, Laura, and her brother, I believe, um, and they took a trip and to try to make contact with him, which on their Facebook page, apparently they did. I have not seen the recordings. I have yet to actually find their Facebook page because I couldn't really find it anywhere. Apparently since 2017, they haven't really done anything with it anyway so who's to say it's so it was his sister that reported mm-hmm. that they did make contact yes there's um, no like proof of it no evp no video yeah apparently nothing. it's uploaded on their facebook page but i but couldn't, couldn't find, find it. it i couldn't find it anywhere so even their facebook page you said is not hasn't mm-hmm. had a lot of activity yeah, I think uh, they haven't had any kind of posts from what I was reading since like 2017. Um, so there hasn't been like, there's no really, and no way did, to tell they where they've been. Uh, ooh, that's a good question. I don't know the exact date. It was uh, just sometime after like they took this trip and they wanted to make contact with him. So in their post, they mentioned, someone had mentioned, it wasn't even necessarily the family, it was people who were commenting on the post that they were mentioning that Mark was possessed and it was a demon that took over Mark's body and did what he did. And they actually referenced the exorcism of Emily Rose, which with that movie, I mean, it is based on a true story. However, it's it's one of those things that's very hard to speculate because with the paranormal area, it's, I mean, granted, you can see, like, the evidence of it, but people, like, you will never have, like, the hard evidence yeah. that you would want to see where it's, like, oh, like, these are facts. Like, this is yeah. more of the subjective portion of it. Well, so, more recently, the whole Conjuring Universe, the devil made mm-hmm. me do it type thing. Right, which, exactly. Which more, um relatable here i would think Mm -hmm. but of course it was the movie wasn't released but when it happened exactly and 
for for those who uh, who want to see that documentary demon house i mean it is it's pretty intense i mean so and it was a that, well, the house that zach just bought because mm -hmm. like he heard about it and he just bought it unseen and then they went and did yes. a documentary on it okay yeah yes I think, yeah yeah i've seen that one it's on amazon it's on prime yeah th they actually have a second episode on it if you haven't seen that yet it's like the lost footage um oh, after the fact i know so chris hadn't seen the it yet lost footage Shit, i wish i had like a notepad that really quick. yeah so chris, uh, chris and i watched it because he hadn't seen it yet and you know like when you let a video play and or like when it comes to the credits and it's like oh like up next well, that's what it did. And I was like, oh, there's a second episode to it. And it was lost footage. When was that released? Of it. 2021. Oh. So like already like a year ago, I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not know about I know, that? I didn't know about it. I don't think we watched that. I, we watched the documentary on it and we saw the house. Yeah. And everything. But yeah, so I'm going to have to look at Prime. Yeah. So it's called the, the Demon House Lost Footage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm check that out. Um, but anyway, so going back to Mark and Deborah, so in that documentary, they mention them, like Zach mentions them. So a few weeks prior to, to their death, and this is kind of where it gets interesting to the whole demonic possession theory. Three re weeks prior, Deborah actually tried, like, cause she heard about the house and, you know, heard that Zach had bought it and that he was investigating mm -hmm. it. And she tried. Hmm. Was it? I'm, okay, so I'm starting to remember. I think it's the same documentary. Is it the one where he said, like, some people, like, totally decided not to do it anymore because of how weird they felt? And then they had, they showed a picture of him with, like, tattoos, and it was, like, 666 mm -hmm. on his knuckle. That's him? Yep. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yes. so this just got inter more interesting for me because, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, and if you watch it again, because they do mention them, and I mean, he doesn't say exactly that he thinks that this could have had something to do with that situation. He just pretty much says, like, I'm very saddened to hear because three weeks, I think he said three weeks prior, she tried to make contact with that demon, and apparently she did, and if you hear the EVP in that documentary, it sounds like it's a definitely a, a man's voice and it says like something, something's wrong. Like it's blank, something's wrong or something like that. And, um, and then three weeks later is when uh, he ended up killing her and himself. So it's kind of interesting because especially if you, if you've seen the documentary, what effect that house is like that and hauntings and especially when it comes to demonic entities of how it can affect a person in their life and how it can change them like that okay, just that watch the remember. conjuring universe movies yeah conjuring the conjuring 2 like those mm -hmm. are the best ones <laughs> i, I that's, mean that's why i don't mess with that shit like yeah if because like okay so like you know my husband and i watch <laughs> all the paranormal stuff too like portals to hell like we call them Zach Baggins, but Bagans. <laughs> like we watch those. I can't. I can't handle him that much, though. But like, you know, <laughs> his uh, he okay. When he tried to fight a ghost, that was like I'm done. Uh, God, he was all That's taking his off whole... his shirt. I know. I can't handle it though. It was one of those I things know. where I was like. Oh God, please! <laughs> See, but I I feel like I was also in you know this stage in my life where <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> Don't ever I, I had the I had the biggest crush on him, and I did, I did not, not so much anymore. It's not that like he's bad looking; it's just he's. So yeah, that did it for me. He's no, learned, I feel. I don't know about that. Maybe. He was on Halloween. Do you watch the Halloween Baking Championship? Yes. I love that shit. He He's was coming on it, out. I think, last year it was. Which he's going to be on it there. again this year. Oh, is he? He's gonna be, yeah, and he's, he's coming out with another his one. Museum. And, like, my, you know, Jordan and I actually went out to Vegas to, like, pick up his vehicle that he just bought. 
Mm-hmm. And we so were like, shit, we should have, we should have like visited that place. You should <laughs> have. I know, I know. It Again, was so little, cool. That's like, the I want to do it again. <laughs> oh, you went? Uh, yeah, I've gone. And it's, yeah. oh, it's so awesome. I want to do all the freaky shit like that. Like, yeah. they, <laughs> even though, like, I the mean, body museum, <laughs> even though that's, yeah. Weird, but I would see that. Well, I feel I like would that's see more, because I think it's just like, curiosity right mm-hmm. yeah well and it has a lot of and history it's too yeah yeah it, it does i like the history when, part when we went i mean they had a whole so they had a whole room based off the serial killers which i thought was really neat like he even had some of the drawings from the night stalker in there and oh. uh ed gein's like clown suit like all kinds of crazy stuff or not ed gein it was um uh, Oh, John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, Gacy, that's it. Gacy. Yeah, yeah, John Wayne Gacy. Oh, so he had like the clown suit in there. They had a whole. Oh, he's got money. Money. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, there God. was a whole other room that it was. He's like the um, longest one. Sorry, I know you're talking, but he's like <laughs> the longest. <laughs> he's no, but if you think about, it, hasn't he been going on for? <laughs> <laughs> Stop <laughs> interrupting me. <laughs> well, it's like George and I were just talking about that because he. Like, He's one of those, he's been on TV. He's, because like most paranormal shows, they don't last very long. Mm-hmm. They like fall out. Like he's had a lot of people come in and out of his show, like that he's employed. Mm-hmm. But he's been on TV. Has it been eight years or 10 years? It's been a really long time. It's been a long time. He's going on 26 seasons of oh, Ghost Adventures. seasons. Yeah, he's coming out with a whole new season so, as well as another doc, like mini documentary because he's done like the Cecil Hotel, Goldfield. Yeah, we saw that. So one. he's doing another one coming out uh, next week, I believe. And honestly, like kudos to him because he's somehow made it work where others haven't. Like, yeah. Cheers, dude. Sometimes don't like you, but you're successful. <laughs> hey, but he, his group came out here to Arizona and they're going to be on one of um, their shows on one of their episodes. They were in, if here. I would have, oh, go ahead. Uh, they... <laughs> <laughs> I oh, can't no. with you. <laughs> no, I have something to say. <laughs> But no, he they did go out there. So that um place that they went to, the painted lady, uh that hotel that they investigated, the group that I was a part of out there, we investigated that same hotel. Where where is this? The painted lady? It's it's yeah, it's at the paint it's the painted lady. It's um I forget where it's located at. I'm not Googling that. I'm Googling. Oh, because he was here in Albuquerque. He he investigated. We sh- we saw um yeah, Ghost Adventures comes to Albuquerque. It was in 2020. And they were yeah. they they did an investigation of kind of like a I think it was like a bar slash hotel, like a almost Yeah, the painted lady. It was at it, so it's in. Yeah. I thought that sounded familiar, but like now that you're all in a different state it's like oh, tripping me out here yeah and then he did the el rancho hotel which is kind of cool mm-hmm. okay anyway sorry i like totally like took i know over. we got sidetracked <laughs> but no going back to the the museum though so they also had like a 1800s like western type room and it had he had a um, white earps bible which no. is insane yeah how mm-hmm. no yep all i can think is like can you believe that <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i mean he's got a lot of historical stuff in there yeah, i mean I and you know what's crazy I go. it would be really cool to see like jordan and i actually really want to go and see yeah. it but we're like we're like that type who takes our anniversary trip and goes to like boston and salem during halloween and <laughs> See, I would love that. Oh, you should. Well, I told Chris. We did the whole tour. I told Chris. See, I, yeah, that's on my bucket list for sure. But I told Chris for my 30th, I want to go because they have an option to investigate that hotel at night for like an hour and a half or something like that. And I really want to do it. Or which one? The painted No, Zach Bingham's Haunted Museum. 
to yeah. investigate the museum. Mm-hmm. Cause it's crazy. They have, uh, so they have a live spirit box that constantly goes on all the time. They have oh, the staircase. Cool. Yeah. They have the staircase from demon house. He kept the staircase as well as the dirt that's in the museum. He's kept the chair. So in the, the wow. movie, um, what is it? The new one for, from the conjuring. What is it called? Uh, the devil made me do it. The devil made me mm-hmm. do it. So it originated with the chair, and he has that chair there, which is kind of creepy. Too. You know, it is creepy. And, like, I know we're, we keep talking about the Conjuring universe, but, like, you know, it's kind of like the idea that Ed and Lorraine had where they had, like, because now it's a mm-hmm. museum in their house. Yep. I think it's still in their house. But, like, yeah, they had, like, a museum of all their mm-hmm. haunted items. And so yep. it, it's totally, it's totally from that. But see, this is where, like, that also freaks me out just a little bit because I do believe it depends. <laughs> well, so oh, here's oh, no, the thing. That. Did I tell you about the experience we had when we went there? Like, no. to the to, to his the museum? No. Or his, yeah. yeah, no, to the museum. So <clears throat> you're not allowed to have your phones. Like, I mean, you can have your phone, but it has to be turned off because you can't take pictures or anything in there. They literally have a warning sign. The first thing that you walk through the door saying warning, like these things can attach to you. We are not liable for anything that happens to you as soon as you walk out of here and you have to sign a waiver and everything um, to go in. So we were talking to this couple outside and she, uh, she was very into it. Like she's kind of like me. Right. And she was like, I just want him to get scratched talking about her boyfriend because he was skeptic. (laughs) I know. Well, in her mind, and I see where she's coming from, but at the same time, I'm like, it's no. like foreshadowing things to come. Hold on. Hold okay. on. <laughs> like so up. in her mind, she was like, well, I, he's a skeptic. I just want him to believe. Like, I want him to see and oh, believe I believe. Still. You know what I mean? So we get into this area and it's almost like a small stage. It has like these huge like clown things. There's like one little room. Uh, I can't remember the story behind it, but they have like a little window in there and with a little thermometer. So like you could put your hand through and supposedly you could feel cold spots, which I didn't feel anything in there. You know, it just obviously. Wait, it's a hold to like a whole other room? Yeah. So like when you up the air conditioner? No. See, but that's the thing is like, it's just, it, I can't remember again. I can't remember like the story behind this little room and you can only fit like two people in there at a time. And so we would take turns going in there and me and Chris were the last ones and I heard tapping in there. And of course I'm trying to think logically. I'm like, oh, maybe it's the pipe. So the first thing I I did, cause we didn't feel anything in the window. Like we saw, you know, the little thermometer thing, nothing changed. And I was like, man, you know, cause of course, like, I feel like when you go into those you places, you kind of want to ex- yeah. experience. So I heard tapping. And so I came out there and I was like, Hey, like, do you guys ever hear or have people like hear tapping noises in there? Cause I'm thinking like, they're going to tell me, Oh, it's the pipes, you know? And then there's like a logical reason behind it in there. She's like, no, I've never heard that. Literally seconds later, that girl that we were talking to, she looked at me and she said, my back is burning. And I looked at her. I was like, wait, what? And she said, Girl. my back is burning. Well, I did. I looked at this tour guide and I said, Hey, her back is burning. And so we pulled up her shirt and I have the pictures. I can send them to you. Um, <laughs> and she Show has, group, damn it. she has scratches. And the crazy thing is, so she had them oh, on he her back. Actually? Oh, she did. No, she did. She, she did. did. Okay. And so she had scratches on her back and, uh, she was like lifting up her side and we literally, and Chris can contest to this too. We saw a scratch form in front of our eyes, which was freaking insane. Yes. I, I, I never mean, told me that. I mean, she like, I thought I did. Call. No, I thought I, I did, I, but I it that. was, it was crazy. And like, even Chris, I guess, looked at this other guy who saw the same thing and they both just looked at each other like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd be like, you babe, we're out. <laughs> yeah. Because um, there's some like creepy Fuck places place. in there. Yeah. I was like, whoa, like, that was insane. So, like, the tour guide ended up taking the picture and then she sent it to her because we couldn't have our phones on, you know. But um, yeah, I thought that that was absolutely 
insane and it was like really cool see, at the same time but scary no see and then like like even when jordan and i watch these shows like we still think like yeah but there could be someone there like tapping on the wall just mm -hmm. to like freak people out you know so it, i i guess i'm in because like i believe like i believe in the otherworldly for sure but at the same time, it's, it, you know, you watch that stuff, you're just like, I don't know, is that real? Is this really real? I don't, I don't know. It, to, to see it yourself would be cool mm -hmm. and freaking frightening at the same time. Like, I would, oh, yeah. I would be like scared shitless. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. time to go to church. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told you about the attachment I had, right? Did I not tell you about that either? The what? The attachment I had during one of the oh, investigations. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. And that's when I was like, Chelsea, you don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> well, I was getting all motherly on you. <laughs> I know. Well, Chris does the same thing because as we were watching Demon House, Again, he was like... watch freaking The Conjuring movies. You see what that shit does to you. Sorry. I mean, I've it's seen like it. And <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm going to take a drink so you can talk. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. We... <laughs> <laughs> but um so i am actually i'm hoping to join another group out here so i can go on more investigations and chris like as we were watching the documentary he was like so don't be investigating houses like that i mean it and i was like okay <laughs> yeah because like what if you do bring that shit up okay so going back to yes so right? this, what's their yeah. names again i'm sorry because i don't have it in front of me so i can't like, yeah it. mark but and deborah constant mark and deborah because i yeah. i swear dude like i have that image of him burned in my mind when we were watching demon house and and zach was like explaining like hey you know even these people like tagged out and he was showing them pictures and this guy like got some crazy tattoos and, like i have that like burned in my mind and i'm thinking oh, yeah shit, that was him and you think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember even thinking when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, I don't think you walk away from that. And then you start doing 666 on your, like, hands and shit. And you, like, mm -hmm. start doing these weird pictures. Like, mm -hmm. and they were and they, they were a little demonic in of themselves, the pictures that he was taking. So, oh, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know, man. It I, does. I do. And I it has that. that effect. Yeah. And I, and I do, too. Out. Yeah, no, and I then totally look at you it. doing it. Oh. oh my gosh. Sorry. So like I mean, not so much the demon part of it, but just ghosts in general are very intriguing to me. So okay. So <laughs> this is where it's like Jordan and I have these debates like all the time. Because I don't know if I necessarily believe in ghosts. Because like when they talk about residual stuff, you know, all this happening kind of thing. Like I don't I don't know if I necessarily believe that, like for me, but I do believe, I believe in demons and I believe in angels. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, cause all I can think is like, what do demons want you to do? They want to like lure you in and like get you somehow. And so that's how they are nice. That's how they like make you hear what you want to hear or see what you want to see. And I think mm -hmm. that's more prevalent than anything else. And so I guess like every time, like when I, we watch those shows, like it's always in the back of my mind. Cause I'm like, better be careful. Better be fucking careful. <laughs> Which I don't know. Cause then there's another part of me that's like so fucking fake. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, cause I, I'm a skeptic in a way too, right? Because I'm, I feel like I have to see and hear it myself, Yeah, you know, to really exactly. believe it. And yeah. I have experienced things like that. It's just when I review, like, and I feel like some of the evidence, like the one in Demon House, I feel like that's pretty good evidence compared to like a lot of his other stuff. Like even Chris we did was like, like that one. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was so good. And, but, you know, compared to like early on, like in his early seasons, cause we started watching it from the beginning and it's just very faint. Like sometimes you can't make out what they're saying, even yeah. though they say like a certain thing. And I'm like, I just don't hear or that. Or they so stretch it. Cause mm -hmm. you're like, I mean, Jordan and I will sit there, rewind it and be like, did you hear that? I'm like, no, I didn't hear that. So we'll like turn our face away. So you don't see like the, mm -hmm. the captions on the bottom, like what's saying, right. what's being said. 
And it's like, yeah, we, we can't make that out at all. And yeah. so sometimes you feel like it's just such a stretch, but anyway. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. But again, I mean, cause I do, I believe in that stuff and you see all the things that it has effect. So again, going back to Mark and Debbie, it's, you know, and you hear a lot of it, like, cause I have read some of the testimonials from their friends and some of the people that they have gone on investigations with. And a lot of them say that it was more of a domestic violence problem than a paranormal issue for sure. I think it does come to a question of like, is it really, um, like, is it, is it a coincidence that that just happened three weeks after the fact that she tried to make contact with this supposed demon in demon house? And, but again, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm going to leave it up to you guys for speculation on that because it's, everybody has their own belief system. I mean, if you look at the facts, they do have that long history of domestic violence issues. And so it, in that sense, it's clear cut and dry. But they are also a part of that paranormal community, which does have have a tendency to affect people right. in a negative way more than a positive way. But and let's just say, let's just say that there really was like a demon in that demon house, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so both of them are there, right? Mark and Debbie investigating mm-hmm. in the beginning. Like you think about that. Oh, okay, so, I mean, this is just my own, like, speculation, of course, but so, mm-hmm. like, you go into that house, and, like, that demon feeds off that kind of shit, mm-hmm. and it'll just make it worse and make it escalate in itself, and mm-hmm. so if you think about it, I don't know, in a way, like, I kind of feel like that, too, because, like, let's just say, like, the, yeah, there there was something there in that house, and it attached themselves, because it's, like, Oh, those people are fucked up. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna go after them, and then it just like attached, and it made them like more angry mm-hmm. and more violent. And then yep. it, you know, three weeks later, you know, yeah. they're gone. Yeah, and that and that just co- goes to show too how powerful that side of it is too, because they never actually went to the house. She was just making. Oh, I thought she. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, she never went to the house. And she how just would that connect, yeah. Yeah, I think she was just using she was doing an EVP session and I think she was directing it towards that demon. And so it was it was like targeted for that specific house and demon. And um because obviously oh, but she wasn't in that location. She no. was just she was doing it remotely it. where she was at. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they've tried to experience experiments like that before. And they've, they've done that with, uh, and this is with Zach Bagans in general. And I, I want to say they were a part like Deborah and, and Mark were a part of it too, but it was with the, uh, Bobby Mackey's and they used another location, I believe like the Winchester house and they were like using satellite to see if like that would amplify and make this spirit spirits more active like trying to basically channel those two haunted locations with bobby mackey's was very like a demonic location if you've ever seen any of those episodes I haven't that one. is that those, oh my gosh back too yes okay. yeah and he's done he's done a couple of episodes regarding bobby mackey's and he will never ever go back to that location wait is that because, that far uh and- kind of it was like their very first episode it was like a music hall like they would do like live music there um there was like a well and yeah that is it's like a, it's a bar um portal yeah. Hill did a show on that one. Oh, okay yeah. so yeah so it's very interesting to see uh, and the, i mean technology itself is is you know uh, evolving so all of like the equipment that they use today compared to what they used to use is yeah. definitely more like higher tech than it was yeah but i mean everything is just evolving i mean like, like, they literally every season you see a new spirit box yeah i mean and you know, honestly and and if you when you read the title when you first watch demon house it does say like it gives that warning that evil entities have a way of attaching even through electronic devices aka watching it 
And it's like viewer discretion is advised yeah. because of that. So it's, it's crazy to think. And here I watch that stuff all the time. I feed yeah. off of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I know kind of disturbing yeah. sometimes if you think about we it. We used but. to just watch that stuff. Like, so the whole month of October, Jordan and I would watch that stuff plus like scary movies. And now it's just a year round thing. <laughs> even, mm-hmm. even in Christmas, we're like, ugh, let's watch something scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, um, I, I, I think that was pretty much it as far as like the case itself but again it just it it always goes and it, if you think about it too i mean the fact that he said i am the devil in that quotation previously yeah, like that's, that's kind that's of really demonic honestly absolutely yeah Satanism, i mean sure. someone yeah i feel like i mean in any given domestic violence situation i mean yes it's 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 very brutal it's it's gruesome at times but I mean, to physically, or to actually say, I am the devil and I'm going to slit your throat. I mean, that's, I don't know. I feel like that takes it like a whole nother step further. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty freaky. Yeah. It's scary to even think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would still clear. I would steer clear of anyone (laughs) to be like, I'm the devil. (laughs) Well, who is it away from you crazy thing uh one of the kids at the hospital i work at like they they joke they say that he's possessed and i haven't seen him itself but apparently he talks to himself in a completely different voice which is freaking scary yeah Uh uh-huh you haven't seen him you haven't worked with him yet no, this is just coming from the other nurses who've worked with him. And I like them talking oh, the about it. I get such chills. Oh my gosh. Is and this like is in a recent. Area than what yeah, you he want? he works in, because uh, I, I mean, they switch us around, but I've been with the girls more than anything. And this, the unit that this kid is on is on a co ed unit. I don't even know how old he is. I want to say he's like 14 or something like that. And he's young. And just imagine you know, walking because we have to do our rounds at night and it is a psych facility, right? So you hear and see some weird stuff, but you walk into the room doing your rounds and they're just talking to themselves in a a different voice than what they normally talk in. And they're just like, like, like like Gollum. (laughs) 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 I'm all Jordan. Come in here. Jordan can do it really well. (laughs) Damn it. How do you do that? And then I just I'll try it and I try it and my whole family laughs at me when I do it. I can't, <laughs> I can't do shit. <laughs> I, can't, uh, so, I can't mimic I, anything. I, I bet Chris could do it. He's a really good impersonator. Yeah. You mean like my <laughs> precious? <laughs> <laughs> this is still going into bloopers. <laughs> it's just so- it sounds like I'm trying to cough up a oh, hairball. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. I can't do I that can't. either. <laughs> no. I, I, I can do very little imitations. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's definitely I, not one of them. <laughs> I try, and then it's just like, it fails. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you see, even oh, that man. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> just, you didn't even try. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> but in my mind, I am. <laughs> I'm, oh, no, that's not, that doesn't sound right. Oh, Retake. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good well, story. That, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't as detailed as the other one. It's, it, this one I feel like was just more good debatable conversation because of the paranormal aspect of it yeah, and paranormal aspect. Yeah. yeah and i love ghost adventures so that's what my new tattoo is actually oh let me see it oh you can, it's i know it's like kind of blotched out because i have like the the shield over it right now but this oh, is the yeah, same tattoo that zach Bagans has oh gosh oh you did crush on him bad girl oh, gosh. <laughs> but this I is am more so telling jordan I, on you oh please <laughs> He's giving me all <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> I'm not surprised. His, his opinion is irrelevant. 
Okay, you can tell him I said so. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I kind of want to do like a shot of our shirts, but I don't know how. Oh. Oh, how do we? How do we end the show? Um. So we go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You know the movie, The Christmas Carol? And like Jim Carrey yes. comes in as a flame. He's all. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh what I was God. going for. <laughs> God. All right. Well, cheers to another episode of Death Over Drinks. If you enjoyed this episode, please click and subscribe. We will be posting every week. So join us next time. If you are interested in learning about the drinks that we're drinking, we do leave the recipes down in the description below. If you have a specific story that you'd like us to share, please drop a comment down below and you never know, we might be talking about that next. Cheers. Cheers.